super excited to show you this. This is the Emacs Tiny Hawk 2. I have been waiting for this thing to hit the streets for quite a while. Um, last year, my absolute favorite indoor racing drone was this guy, the Emacs Tiny Hawk and the Tiny Hawk S. Basically about the same thing for me. Both were just supremely great flying quads. There's a few little drawbacks to them that we'll talk about with the Tiny Hawk 2. The Tiny Hawk 2, as you can see, is basically the exact same size, like dimension-wise, as the original Tiny Hawk and the Tiny Hawk S. Uh, I'll just refer to this as the OG Tiny Hawk, Tiny Hawk 2 here. Uh, uses the exact same props, exact same configuration. The flight controller is the same from the Tiny Hawk 2S, not the very first Tiny Hawk, just the one that'll run on 2S. Couple things that we see that are very different. One of them staring at us right in the face here is look at them peepers. Look at that lens. Look how big that is. That is a normal uh, nano camera. It has a normal size lens. None of this, this micro lens stuff. And I tell you what, man, it looks so good when you're flying around. It it really takes this thing to a whole new level. The only real big complaint I had about the OG Tiny Hawk was the camera, which wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. And, um, well, the turtle mode thing. And, well, we really didn't fix a whole lot. This thing still doesn't really turtle mode all that great. It will do it if you catch an edge, but if you have if you struggle with doing uh, turtle mode with the Tiny Hawk with the four blade props, you're you're in for about the same experience with the Tiny Hawk 2. Um, not much they can do about it, just based on the whole frame design. It's a very unique setup. Basically, the whole quad's kind of built upside down. Um, really, really interesting setup. Um, the, let's get this guy out of the way. The camera here. This is, this is the big selling feature for me. Um, a, you can adjust the camera angle like this, just by tilting it. It's just held in by two screws kind of pitching in place, but this is an actual full size, uh, run cam camera. And this is the, uh, the nano two camera. It's, you know, it's, it's like a, it's, it's the same camera I run in my, uh, five inch, uh, floss 3.0 and it looks great. It handles light transition really well, especially when you compare it to, I'd say probably what its biggest competition is right now. And that's the Mobula 6. And I'll uh, show you a little bit of difference here uh, between the, the light handling capabilities of both cameras. And as you can see, when we're looking at, uh, at my fan, at the light hanging from my fan, the Mobula 2 gets washed out really, really bad. But the Tiny Hawk 2, it handles that light transition super fast, super well, and you can see everything. Nothing gets really super washed out uh, like the Mobula. And, and don't get me wrong, the Mobula camera is really good too, but the Tiny Hawk 2 is just uh, in a league of its own. It is, they're hardly comparable. It is so much better. Now the Tiny Hawk 2 uh, also will run on 2S, and I should have a little video plan up over here of me flying around on 2S. The 2S experience, it's it's okay. It's fun. It's a good little good little uh, romp around the outside. Uh, 2S indoors is pretty much unusable. The the power curve of these motors is is a ton of power down low, and it makes it very very difficult to maintain constant altitude. Um, it does come with one of these little 2S packs running the PH 2.0 connector. Uh, it also comes with a the usual 1S 450 milliamp pack, again, PH 2.0. Uh, 
Uh, you do get a little USB charger, which is kind of nice um, to charge the 2S battery through the balance port. Uh, but again, that's it's half an amp uh, charge rate. So, and of course, you do get the the typical um, Emacs case an extra set of props and you're going to need more props. It's another one of the downsides to the Tiny Hawk 2. The same problem we had with the Tiny Hawk 1, but when you smack the ground pretty hard, especially like tile or concrete, oh look at that. You can see right here, I've already got a prop that's cracking right around the hub there. And you will go through these props pretty quick. And uh, you know, this will hang on there for a couple flights, but if I were to tap the ground pretty hard, this prop's going to just fly right off. But you'll see it'll develop all these these little stress cracks around the hub. Uh, here's what a good one looks like. So that is one of the big issues with the Tiny Hawk 2 is crashing hard and losing props. It's pretty, pretty normal for that to happen. So the Tiny Hawk 2 does have integrated LEDs here. You can see them in the hoop section. They're powered off the ESC, so they only light up when the motors are spinning, which, uh, you know, that, that's one way to do it. Um, some people get the little LED strips from... Uh, tinywhip.com that are powered on all the time. Those are kind of cool looking. They don't really show up on the black frames, but they show up really, really nice on the white frames and they look pretty darn cool. Now there is quite a bit of difference, especially when it comes to the weight department between these three quads. Um, obviously the lightest one we got here, and I'm talking no, no battery, is the Mobula 6. This thing comes in at just a tiny 20 grams. The OG Tiny Hawk, 29 grams and the tiny hawk 2 she's a big old girl uh 31 grams she's she's got some girth behind her but how does that translate into flight performance now um if you watch my mobula 6 review which i'll put a link up here to it um, i have a standard track that i have set up in my basement i'm using a delta 5 four node timer that i built myself it's extremely accurate it's like a world-class type timer um, use it for multi-GP events. It's integrated with live time, all that stuff. And I have a standard track that I fly, and I fly all these quads in that same track. You know, I won't take my first or second pack. I'll take third, fourth, and fifth. That way I have a couple packs to warm up. And the results are interesting. You would think the lighter Mobula 6 would be the faster quad, but and I tell you what, it feels like it's a faster quad. I feel like I'm going around the track way faster on this guy, but the numbers don't lie. The Tiny Hawk 2 is faster. It doesn't feel like it when you're flying it, but the timer doesn't lie. This thing is faster. I'll put the numbers up for my last review for the Mobula 6 right here. And here is what I did with the Tiny Hawk. My average lap time was 13.8 seconds. Yes, it doesn't seem like a lot compared to the Mobula 6, but it is less. Uh, my minimum lap time, 9.4 seconds. That's a second and a half less than what it took for the Mobula 6. And my max lap time was 23.4. Uh, this is not only faster, but it's more consistent. I don't really know how to explain it, but it feels way more locked in in the corners. The Mobula 6 wants to kind of dip and dive and kind of like flutter through the corners this thing will stay locked in. I think it has to do with the fact that it has a bit more weight. So it does carry some inertia and the props are bigger. So I think it has, I feel like it has much more authority in the air than the Mobula 6 does. Don't get me wrong, the Mobula 6 is a great little quad, but as far as build quality goes, this thing is on a absolute different level. This thing is built way better than the Mobula 6. This thing, um, You'd be lucky if it doesn't catch on fire when you plug it in. But if you get a good one, they're good. But the motors aren't built great. The flight controller, it's it's happy model. So it question questionable quality. There's been issues with the Run Cam 3. Um, I haven't had any issues with it, but uh, I've got a buddy whose lens popped off, and apparently there is a production issue with them. Um, but the Tiny Hawk 2, this is a this is I don't know, it's like it, it's a very high quality indoor flying drone. And so when we're talking about lap times, uh, my last multi-GP event, I decided to fly this for a few laps and I could have swore I was crushing with this thing. It felt like I was going so much faster on the Tiny Hawk 2. Um, again, the timer don't lie. I was much slower with the Tiny Hawk S than I was with the 2. And even the people spectating said, oh yeah, the Tiny Hawk 2 was way faster. 
uh, when I was flying around the track. And I think it has to do with the lens distortion from these cameras. Even the, the, the Mobulo 6 has a little bit of, uh, of a fish eye to it, which makes you have that, that weird warp speed uh, feeling to it. So it feels like you're going way faster than you are. Uh, but in reality, like I said, timer don't lie. Uh, this is the faster of the three quads here. Um, it's really nice. I really highly recommend it. If you're watching up here, you're watching my uh, my timed laps, and uh, it it flies really good, and it is locked in. It is locked in solid, but not the way it came out of the box. I had to do some work on it. I like using the Project Mockingbird. There's kind of like a beta test version of this. I've kind of tweaked it and modded it to my liking. I will definitely put the CLI dump for the stock configuration and also for my my personal configuration with Project Mockingbird. Um, it and also using the JES uh, ESC 48 kilohertz uh, ESC firmware. I know it's like four four or five bucks something like that, but it's worth it. It makes a big difference. Um, not saying it doesn't fly great out of the box, but it is it can be way better. If you're flying at stock and you don't like it, there's room to be had. Uh, now, I don't fly in acro mode. Um, most people who fly indoor whoops, uh, they don't fly in acro mode. They fly angle mode, and that's how I fly. Uh, the way I have the Project Mockingbird set up, I have my modes and my, and my rate selection on a switch. So if you're flying around in angle mode in rate profile one or two, you're not doing it right. Angle mode, rate profile three. Just put on a three position switch. Everything should be set up right uh, for my dump, but that's how it's designed to fly. And it flies super good. It is so precise and so sharp flying. Um, I highly recommend this. If, you, if, you, <clears throat> if you're looking for an indoor whoop and you don't have one, definitely go ahead and pick this guy up. If you already have the Tiny Hawk S or the OG Tiny Hawk or the Mobula 6, no, I wouldn't get it. Um, it's better. I I believe it's better. I believe it's a better flying quad. Um, and again, big disclaimer: this is I'm only talking one S. I don't really care about two S performance. That's just a novelty to to sell units. It's nice that it does it, but I don't care. Um, if I had either one of these already, I wouldn't say it's worth upgrading to this because you can you can haul butt with both of these guys as opposed to having to shell out for another one of these. But hey, if you want to be on the cutting edge. This is probably going to be the indoor drone for me for the rest of the year until Emacs comes out with a Tiny Hawk 3 or, or, or whatever they're going to come out with. But this is really good. Um, the specs, you know, you can go online and check the specs out. I'm not going to rattle through them because, you know, I'm just going to be reading things off. But anyways, I, hey, I hope you like this. These videos, they take quite a bit of effort to make. If you're not a subscriber, which eh, probably most likely you're not looking at my numbers here, uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out. If you're interested in any of these products, I have uh, affiliate links down in the description below. If you click on those before you buy anything from those vendors, I'll get a cut. It costs you nothing and it helps me out. It helps justify manufacturers sending me these things. By the way, this is purchased out of my own pocket. Actually, all three of these are. So this is, this is no BS review. This is my honest thoughts along with the Delta 5 timer, backing me up and making sure I'm honest because like I said, again, the timer don't lie. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking this out. Um, if you have any questions about any of these things, please put them in the box below. I, I talk to everybody. Uh, if you really want to help me out besides clicking through those affiliate links, check out my Patreon. I do monthly giveaways. I just gave away a Tiny Hawk. Uh, I just gave away an OG Tiny Hawk. Um, I'm planning on actually giving away this guy right here. This is my my veteran uh, race quad, undefeated in our chapter. Yeah, it was like four races, but hey, still undefeated. Uh, I plan on giving this guy away. So if you were in, if you want to get this, go ahead and send. If you want to get this or have a chance to get this, go to Patreon. Go ahead and sign up, um, and good luck.
All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking this out. And, oh, man, I'm telling you what, it has never been a better time to be stuck indoors. Get yourself one of these guys. Get yourself a tub full of these batteries. And, by the way, if you're looking for a 1S charger, this is the best one on the market as far as I'm concerned. The ISTT UC4. It used to only charge uh, standard 4.2 volts, but it can be uh, upgraded to charge HV. They have firmware out for it. Super easy. On the go charger uses USB C. It's it is the perfect combo for what we got going on here. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking us out, and I will see you all next time. Peace.